Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. Part of the beauty of gaming on a PC as opposed to a console is that it's always possible to push the limits further. Whether that's with a higher resolution monitor, exotic peripheral devices, or a high-end virtual reality setup. So it shouldn't be surprising that many computer gaming enthusiasts have wondered if the grass would be greener if they installed a powerful server CPU in their gaming rig. And the idea? isn't really that absurd. Intel's Xeon lineup, for example, gets marketed as their top tier and most reliable processors. But the pricing of some models is comparable to Intel's own desktop counterparts. So is it worth it to take the plunge so you can laugh at your peon friends who are still gaming on their puny Core i5s and Ryzen 7s? Well, to answer, we need to examine how difficult it would be to migrate to a server class processor. Not only do server CPUs often use very similar, if not identical microarchitectures to consumer chips, many of them even use the same socket, allowing an upgrade to a Xeon or Opteron CPU, whether it's officially or unofficially. Just replace the CPU itself on your existing motherboard. Boop. And then after you fire up your machine with its new server class DNA, you probably won't even notice a difference in the basic functionality of your machine. That is, all your drives, memory modules, and peripherals should continue to work as they did. But hold on a minute. You've opened up your favorite game and things don't really seem to be any better. Your frame rates are about the same and you can't crank the settings up any higher than you did with your old CPU. What gives? Well, remember how I said that server CPU architectures are very similar to typical gaming processors? This means that core for core, clock for clock, performance shouldn't be terribly different from what you're already used to. And in some cases, it could even end up being worse. Server CPUs are designed with stability and power efficiency in mind, since they often power systems that need to be running 24-7 in data centers that have monthly power bills greater than what you or I make in a year. That is why their cores typically run at lower clock speeds than desktop CPUs. Also, one of the biggest reasons for buying server processors is to get more processing cores than you can on the desktop. But because most games and desktop applications can't spread their processing load over multiple cores very well, even a server CPU with 20 cores won't give you a noticeable performance boost in games because it'll often have lower single-threaded speeds. Making matters worse, many server chips don't support overclocking, don't include integrated graphics for iGPU accelerated workloads and troubleshooting, and one of their most desktop applicable features, stability enhancing ECC memory support, drives up the cost of your CPU, requires more expensive ECC memory, and won't be utilized by games. Which isn't to say that you can't game on a server processor if you find a really good deal on eBay or something. So if this is the case, hey, pair it with a solid graphics card and have fun. Your frame rate might be slightly diminished in some games due to the lower CPU clocks, but if you stream or you screen capture your gameplay, the extra cores could come in handy. And of course, if you do more than just game, a server CPU is a perfect choice for virtualization, allowing you to run virtual machines in isolated software environments for running multiple operating systems, serving media to your household, or heck, even having multiple people run separate gaming sessions on the same system, which we detailed in our Two Gamers, One CPU project, which you can check out up here. But getting back to most people, if you're Joe Gamer looking to max out your FPS, there isn't much point in sitting around coveting a Xeon or Epic CPU, especially because there are other upgrades that you can make to your system that would be way more attention grabbing. Do you ever find yourself trying to control two computers at once? 
Well, Synergy is the solution for you. It's a software tool that allows you to do that with just one keyboard and mouse. You can even share multiple screens. So there's no more messing around for, you know, which set of peripherals goes with your development station and which set goes with your Mac and which set goes with your you know, Windows PC because it's even cross-platform with great features like clipboard sharing, dragging and dropping between the computers, custom hotkeys, and more. It's available in both basic and pro versions with the latter including SSL encryption to secure the data sent between the computers. Synergy is offering a 50% discount to TechWiki viewers if you just check out the link at the video description. In the video description. It's down there. So thanks for watching guys. Like, dislike, check out our other channels, leave a comment with video suggestions for the future, and subscribe.